Hello, friends, and welcome to another edition of All New Snap Judgments. As always, I'm Roy Rogers, and joining me today is my friend and yours, Aaron Glazer. Glazer, my friend, how are you doing on this balmy, balmy, balmy day out here on the East Coast, which we can be grateful that we are not getting slammed by earthquakes and hurricanes like out west, but it is kind of gross out here on the East Coast. So how are you doing, my friend? I don't know. I kind of haven't really left the house today, so everything's going well. I uh, set up a bunch of videos. I in By the time that our listeners are hearing this slash viewers watching this, I will be in London where it is hopefully not balmy, balmy, balmy. And uh, so I set, spent today getting everything set up for the trip as far as content. Well, I think it's ecologically impossible for it to be balmy. I don't think we've reached that point of global climate change, but you know, who knows? We live in wild times. Well, speaking of wild times, Aaron, who is our very special guest this week? We are joined by the one and only, the legendary, the face, voice, and words of Marvel Snap Zone. I wasn't sure what the third one was going to be, but I said and, so I had to come up with one. It is Den. Hey, Den. Hey, I'm not sure about voice, because I'm probably the only person on the whole website that doesn't do videos. But uh, thanks for the intro. You don't do videos in English. True, I do, I do videos in French, but I do not recommend anyone to watch those because I'm going to lose all credibility if you do. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dan, just for our loyal listeners and loyal viewers who have foolishly not checked you out on social media, besides finding your awesome content on Marvel Snap Zone, where else can folks engage with you, find your content, and all of that wonderful stuff? Uh, well, for Marvel Snap, it's mostly on Marvel Snap Zone, except if you speak French and want to see me play uh, completely hammered in the morning, then I have a YouTube channel for that. I do. Uh, otherwise, it's really Twitter, where I try to post a deck every day and keep people updated on the metagame and uh, what is going on in the world of Marvel Snap. And that's about it. I'm not, I'm not much of an internet person, to be honest. It happens to be my work, but I try to, to touch grass as, as possible. <laughs> <laughs> so what is your Twitter slash X handle, my friend? Uh, it's uh, den underscore CCG. Uh, I mostly talk, ab uh, talk about Marvel Snap there, but I've been playing Hearthstone, played Runeterra in the past. Just I, I like cards. Let's say it that way. Feel you, feel you. Imagine, imagine if they made cards out of grass. Oh, I think that's called geography, and I was really bad at this. <laughs> so, fair enough. I think, phys you know, cardboard, grass, I don't know. Uh, anyway, uh, before we jump into our very exciting tier list that we are going to be creating here today, we need to remind you, our loyal listeners and loyal viewers, where you can engage with us, whatever... Ever, Elon Musk is currently ca calling the billion dollar social media platform he owns. You can find us there at Snap Judge Cast. We are the official podcasting partner of Marvel Snap Zone, the place where you find the awesome content made by Dan and many of our other former guests like Lauren and many other awesome Marvel Snap Zone content creators. But we are also in their Discord where you can find Glazer 247365, even. Next week, when he is on vacation in London, you will find him there engaging with you on their Discord. So make sure that you go and join the best large Discord community out there. The link to the Discord is in the show notes and in the description of this episode on both YouTube and your friendly neighborhood podcatcher. Our email, which is sometimes functional, uh, but it's hard sometimes to find your emails through the kick spam Glazer is responsible for is snap judgments podcast at gmail.com. We are also on Mastodon, everybody's favorite extinct animal social media platform at snap judgments with an E at tabletop.vip. And most importantly, we are on YouTube at Snap Judgments Pod, where you can find daily, usually just weekdays, but sometimes weekends because Glazer's just like that. You can find daily <laughs> Snap takes on that YouTube channel at Snap Judgments Pod. 
Glazer, if our loyal listeners were to become our loyal viewers and check out the YouTube, what would they find on there now? So since this coming weekend is my birthday, I decided that for a few days, the channel is actually going to be some of our friends, some of our former guests posting videos in the exact snap take style with decks still curated and picked out by me. And so we're going to have not only my decks and like I've got plenty of videos for while I'm gone, but we're also going to have a bunch of decks from people like Savage Yeti and Peaceful Sea and so on. So please check those out. I think you're going to find some content you really like. Awesome. That's really exciting. Really cool birthday present from our friends and fellow snappers out there. So that's really awesome. Make sure you check out the YouTube. But we need to jump right into it, starting with the brand new card that just went live. Wolverine's clone daughter, everybody's favorite member of the Wolverine family, X-23. So what does Laura give us here? She has, when this is discarded or destroyed, regenerate it at a random location. You get plus one energy next turn. She costs one energy, has two power. And then what are your feelings on everyone's favorite Wolverine clone? I really hope people are not going to ruin it through playing armor in every single deck because <laughs> this card looks like a hell of a fun. Like, there are a lot of combos, and we're not going to be limited by Electro just telling you you have to only play one card per turn. I have a lot of exciting things that I want to try with the card, so please give me 24 hours of no armor. Let's make it like a gentleman's agreement, and then you can counter me. I don't care. I'll give you the cubes. Uh, there, there's no problem about it. I don't, I don't need to win that much, but please let me have my fun with the card because this looks like a super fun card. Glazer? I think this card is really great next month. I think that this month, what we're going to see, because this card is really good and really strong, is armor is just going to be everywhere. And slowly but surely, people will forget armor is a card. And as they forget armor is a card and go, oh, no one's playing Destroy, no one's playing X-23, X-23's play rate and win rate will spike. And then it'll just be one of those cards. Uh, I think this is, like, all but guaranteed. Like, the downside is very good, right? Plus one energy is never less than very good. It's a perfectly respectable stat line. It has a chance to be an amazing broken card. I don't think it's going to get that high, but I still think it's really solid. I mean, and it's going to be really enjoyable. If armor was not in the game, it would compete <laughs> for broken, yes. <laughs> you're going to be nerfed soon kind of card. But because we have counters and we know how those counters work, I guess it's seen like as a really good card but yeah x23 is an exceptionally good card if no one's coming for it i think i mean it's hard it to also go ahead, go ahead, go oh sorry go ahead right no please no i was just gonna say it's hard to screw with what either of you said my main contribution here is this is one of the ugliest mm -hmm. art of a core card in a while like lore is a great character with a lot of great art i just like what is this piece? Like, every time I look at it, I'm like, this makes me want to not buy the card. Even though what you two are convincing me, no. it's probably the strongest card they've released you have to buy it. in several weeks. But, ugh, ugly art. Anyway, go, go Glazer. Ugly art? So, what? Yeah, I think this is ugly, too. Oh, no, it's nice. It, it's so nondescript. It, like, outside of the claws, that could be anyone, whatever. Um, there's some really great... Uh, variants that are not like on the release schedule yet. So what I was going to say is like this is the week to open spotlight caches. This is the best week we've ever had for spotlight caches because Silk is now a meta card and X23 is if not a meta card close enough. So like that you can get both of those for the equivalent of just hopefully you've been hoarding spotlight caches and if you've got four you're guaranteed to get both is unbelievably great value. This is like the week that was promised when this new system came in. Agreed. Well, then, oh, go ahead. Do you have no, something to say? I, I agree. If He's someone agreed. doesn't have <laughs> silk, they should definitely like spend spotlights on this week. Um, hopefully, second dinner. Do not nerf silk. Come on. Uh, no, it's no, unnecessary. Don't don't do this. Like the card has been really good, but not because it's broken. So uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I think it's a great week uh, to to spend spotlight caches. Also because it's two great cards and they are in very different decks. So for people that actually like to change and play different archetypes, you get like two, well, I don't know if Silk is, but uh, let, let's call it this way, but two foundational cards that you can build upon and have your deck like really rely on their ability. 
So it's, I think it's really good to have both cards right now in the metagame. Well, Dan, I was going to offer you the opportunity. Do you want to comment on any of August's other cards? Uh, since you haven't been on the show this month, we always offer that opportunity each week to our special guests. Uh, Silver Samurai is, to me, the real card of the month. Um, yep. I think it's going to be really strong because there's a deck that is playing Zeb when Stature and Silver Samurai has Play Me in that deck written all over it, in addition to being a Discord deck and Discord being in dire need of help uh, for quite some time now. I, like, uh, But otherwise, I just love the, the flavor of the card. I think Marvel Snap has really really strong disruption lately ever seen the, the nerf bounce we're seeing like the tech cards are kind of taking over with like enchantress shang chi spider ham like i mean i could name at least 10 that are incredibly impactful to the metagame and i think what's so frustrating is that those cards they kind of destroy your uh, your strategy but it's really hard to retreat against them like shang chi enchantress these cards are going to come on turn six and so when you get hit by them usually you have a lot of cubes in the pool and while disruptive cards like Samurai, I think they're going to give you the opportunity to kind of retreat earlier and still give the person who played the card uh, a great feeling. Like, oh, that's the card that made them retreat. That's the card that won me the game. So I think it's, well, it's not a win-win, but I think the feeling given for the person that's going to lose to that card, it's going to be much better compared to a Shang-Chi that just costed you eight cubes or like an Enchantress that just disabled your entire deck. I think you have more agency because... Snaps and retreat actually matters compared to just while well, you have that card by turn six, you lost. And I really like that kind of disruptive cards in general because I feel like there's more like things going on inside the game and it makes like it gives you more responsibility towards like snapping and retreating than just, oh, I drew the card. I agree completely. I've been all about Silver Samurai since he was spoiled. Everyone told me I was crazy at first, and now, slowly but surely, everyone's coming around. That card's going to be great. Like, better than X-23. Great. All right. Well, we'll find that out next week, I believe, right? The, this is a five-release five month, right? Yeah, it's... Yep, uh, yep. And so let's jump into the OTA changes. There's three uh, pretty pretty interesting changes. Further proof that we live in, you know, Silver Surfer Supremacy uh, is uh, out there here. So Forge, uh, same cost, same power, but now he gives a plus three to the next card you play. Shauna has fallen into the Surfer camp. Losing one cost down to three and two power down to two. Otherwise, her text is unchanged. And then Crystal has fallen from a 4-4 to a 3-3. Three, three. Dan, you are our guest, and there's only one this week, so I'm just going to be calling on you first every time. Okay. So, Dan, what do you think of these OTA changes? I think it's pretty ironic that two cards became three costs, and that's the two costs that actually became the best card in Surfer. Uh, this, is, <laughs> this is something that made me laugh a lot, like, looking back at it. I'm like, oh, everyone was like, oh, my God, Surfer got buffed to the moon, and it was because of the two costs out of these three cards. Uh, so it was pretty fun. Uh, otherwise, unfortunately, Shanna is still Shanna, I think. I mean, I've tried it in one deck, and it didn't do so good. I haven't seen anyone like post a deck about the card that actually did something relevant lately. Um, maybe I missed it. And uh, i actually pretty pleased uh, with, with Crystal. Feels like as a 3-3, I've seen more of it. Uh, it's nowhere near what Forge has been doing this week, but like the buff like had an impact on the card which i think defines as it was a good buff i think i agree the forge changes everything right it's in like forge is just index now it's yeah. one of the best in slot twos from totally unplayable it's wild how much that one power means especially when you can multiply it across things like deadpool or brood or whatever else um, I don't care about Shauna. Shauna doesn't exist. That card. Um, <laughs> like it just doesn't she's exist. Just a, like she's so, just a bad card. Like I think it's like needs to it, either it's, design it from the ground up or just there's bad cards in card games. It happens. I, I don't know where I saw it. Someone suggested that she just make a bunch of raptors, and I'd even prefer that. So like a tree cost squirrel girl. 
Yeah, basically. Oh my god. And it happens in her lane too, or maybe you get the play effects for your stupid rap. Well, it does right? happen on her so, lane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like Squirrel Girl doesn't, right? So like but the, the raptors one would synergize. power for your two additional mana so sure 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 uh <laughs> it would it synergizes reasonably with other cards right but like with kazar and i don't know like look she's bad i don't want to spend any time on shana can we just move on mm. uh, but i think uh, crystal has real homes i only have one opinion about shana which is i think they should mm-hmm. keep dropping her and she would be a really good to like pull two card because that card is made for Kazoo, except when you unlock yeah. Shanna, you're done with Kazoo. So I think she should just be in the same pool as like Kazar and these kind of cards. And she would see play there because it's simple enough to understand it. All her synergies are already available in pool two. And you would even have the battle with Killmonger. So she, you actually have interaction with the card. So honestly, I think just make Shanna like leave it a 3 2 or like buff it to a 3 3 if you want. But just drop it to pool two. And I think actually a lot of people are going to play the card there. Hmm, that's the best Shauna take I've ever heard. Congratulations. <laughs> um, I, I, th- I, I think Crystal has real homes. I think Crystal's change, like, she goes in negative decks now. Like, just because, like, uh, if you can play her on three, that's an extra turn to see negative, and that's your win condition. And that's great, right? Like, so now you have Magic and Crystal as ways to get your negative out. You also have, um, she has some, I mean, that's like her main home, but like she has some home in things like Tribunal and certain like variations of Destroy that really want to see combo pieces. Like she's a real card now for the first time since I started playing. So like, hey, like she's still like a C level card, right? But she has homes as that like very niche card. Yeah. And like, we're going to talk about Forge 18 times today. So I feel like we don't have to spend too much time on them, but like what a change. Yep. It is a big yes for me. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Crystal is, I think, the best change here. Um, Surfer is the kind of deck, I mean, just on a base level, that can really say F you to your opponent when it comes to the symmetrical nature of it, because you just need to draw towards an extremely powerful card, and if this makes it, you know, if Silver's, you know, you can go one card deeper, so... That's one additional extra draw towards Surfer. And plus, she has a lot of other combo ap- applications. And the more a card, the cheaper a card draw effect gets, the better it's going to be every single time. So, you know, she's sort of consistently fallen in sort of both cost, both in the sense of her text has gotten better, and now her actual cost has fallen. So I think this is probably the safest place for Crystal to land. Could, could you imagine if she becomes a 2 2? Like, uh, she would lose that the Surfer synergy. Yeah, that's true. But I would I mean, but, but she wouldn't. Lo- she wouldn't lose the negative synergy. Yeah, I wouldn't change much towards the the negative synergy. I mean, I'm still waiting on the Ronin synergy with the card. To be honest, that's the one I'm missing. I mean, she's she's the wife. <laughs> like, like, that's the only deck she's not been tried in. It's it's not about trying her. The problem with Ronin is just that like the upside is sort of under your opponent's control, right? Or at least to more than you would like it to be. Whereas, like, I put rocks in your deck. There's nothing you can do. The rocks yeah. are in your deck. My dark rock gets bigger. I keep cards in my own hand. There's, like, two cards in the whole game right now. Three next week that discard cards from my hand. I can keep cards in my hand if I want my dino to be big. They could play cards, I mean, right? Like, I- you have to play... like. You have to play Ronan on five or six because that's what he costs. And at that point, they can play cards. I mean, I was excited because as a tree cost, you could like go Crystal Maximus or that kind of things on turn six. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, that's not enough. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's like, I just drew your whole deck for you, but on the last turn. And it's just like, I had a 10 power last turn. Like, you don't want to play America Chavez in the last turn. So you don't want to play two cards of America Chavez in the last yep. turn. All right. Well, I think we've OTA'd out this balance changes. Uh, so let's jump into our top 10 decks in Marvel Snap. Glazer. Just one number. Um, what's the number? It's No, no. no. Uh, so I, we agreed on six, not seven. I just don't know how to count. Uh, okay. Right. Um, uh, we're probably going to sure. talk again about it anyway. So we, we agree. Anyway, like, we, well, we managed way, to Aaron, agree on some decks. Just take it. It was a really difficult discussion. It took days, actually, to get to this point. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah, that's fair. This was, uh, right. this was def- harder than last time. The meta is less well, solved. Well, you two 
clearly understand what's going on here, but neither myself nor our loyal <laughs> listeners and viewers do. So, Glazer, what I was trying to do, will you please explain what's going on with this top 10 decks meta list, uh, meta tier list here? What do we got? So every week, Den does a tier list that is fundamentally entirely data-driven. But data doesn't always match up with our expectations and experiences playing the game, particularly at a high level. So once every so often, as often as we can get Den to stay up way too late, <laughs> we like to have him come on. And what we do is we say, here are the decks. We start with however many decks we agree on as top 10 decks. This time it was six. Last time we did this, it was eight. And then we take all the other decks and put them in a pool. And we say, some number of these decks will be the last four slots. And then we argue fundamentally about their placement. We rank them from one to 10. So what's going to happen is we're going to rank num We're going to figure out what the number seven, eight, nine, and 10 decks in Marvel Snap are. And then we will place them on a list with the top six and then figure out a giant list for placement. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. Let us start with our wild card decks, the ones that will be in the top or could be in the top 10. They, this is the list of them. We have a sample list. We'll go through and talk about them each. I'm just going to read this list and then we will move on. Um, some of these are going to delimit it fast. They are Bounce, Death Pool, Destroy Nimrod, Discard, Lockjaw Evo, Negative Surfer, Patriot, and then four varieties of Thanos. Control, Lockjaw, Destroy, and Move. And I have a feeling we're going to just end up with a lot of Thanos. All right, let's, let's get started with this list with Bounce. Do you think Bounce has a real claim to the list? Okay, um, I will try not to argue too much. And I will say <laughs> yes, but not this list. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and, and that's gonna be that's gonna be the biggest problem. I feel is that this is why like the tier lists are data driven and they're not my opinion. Because if they were my opinion, it would take four days to rate each report, and that would basically be my full time job. Um, is everyone has its own sensibility when it comes to building a deck? Everyone has a play style and everything. And for example, like I know this list is good. I know Demoni as had great results for it over two months with this list. So I'm not gonna argue about is this list good. It's just there are bounce decks which I think are more suited to the meta, or just they fit me better. But I think this one gets like it's too weak to Killmonger and it's too weak to Surfer now with Shadow King, that kind of things. So I like bounce with like Spider Ham, I like bounce with Mirage, I like that kind of bounces, which are more like I would say flexible and less points. But yeah, I think bounce overall as an archetype has a shot at top 10. But because it's going to be much more difficult to play than other decks on this list, it's probably not going to be top 10 for a lot of people. So I think I'm going to keep Bounce off too, um, largely because like whether it belongs in the top 10 or not, Destroy is everywhere right now, and that automatically weakens Bounce. Even when Bounce was great, Destroy was a really rough matchup. So let's, for the time being, leave it off the list, and if we somehow come back and Bounce is like, oh wait, that's better than that, then we'll re-add it. Sure. And I mean, for Bounce to be top 10, you have to spend much more time on it than with other decks. So let's say you have never played Bounce, you're not going to consider it a top 10 deck. So that I don't know if that plays into a role or if we just consider these decks are played optimally or not. Let's let's assume that they're like played optimally or we're playing them well. And in a like this is a sample version. This isn't the only version we're talking about, right? Okay. Like the idea is like this represents Bounce. Okay. Then, yeah, it's fringe 10 or out of it. Yeah, I think, so, it's just the matchups are rough. Wave is coming back, and it can't answer Wave anymore. And, like, it's just a few too many things, I think. Even move, I mean, Polaris and Spider-Man are pretty annoying for bounce. I mean, they get to move your Angela, they get to move your Bishop. Mm -hmm. um, they can mess, like, I've seen a lot of people get their Beast messed up, and that kind of yep. thing by these cards, so... It's like it's not a bad deck, but you have to be in control of a lot of things for it to work, and you have to know the meta game extremely well. And it feels much easier to be tricked than it is to trick your opponent. I would say it this way. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. All right, Roy, any arguments for cutting bounce or semi cutting bounce at least? Uh, I no, I, I mean I think. Oh, he's muting and I'm muting. Your microphone doesn't want us to hear you. Yeah. It's fine, I don't have anything that important to say, so let's move on to the next deck. Alright, this is my version of Deathpool. Um, there's a thousand of these. 
It's got yes. X-23, so this is speculative. I think X-23 might make this make the list, but I don't think it's on the list. X-23, X-23. makes every destroy list, like, no questions asked. So, I'm gonna, I think this is better than Bounce right now, right? Like, I think that Deadpool is, like, one of the biggest beneficiaries for X-23, because at the end of the game, or just even playing Deadpool every turn it's with free. a destroy card, <laughs> yeah. But at the end of the game, like if you can null, if you've got, and, and play Deadpool, like that, that's one of the biggest thing I'm eager to try with X twenty three, because I feel like this is the one thing missing from Deadpool is up until this point, you couldn't really play Zola and Null, which are two cards you really mm-hmm. want to play in that deck, because it costs seven and you can't play Electro and you're not gonna play Psylocke, so it was mm-hmm. too difficult. If X twenty three allows to go like Deadpool Null or Deadpool Zola destroy so dead deadpool and zola don't work together the way we want them to i don't think someone told me that the other Wait, day you still get copies sure, of deadpool on the board do you you sure i'm pretty sure it's the same it's, it's the so. same way as nimrod if you zola nimrod you get four of so them so it it should but i heard it doesn't work oh then it's a someone bug. told me it doesn't work i haven't, I haven't tried, tried it, it in a very so, long time because i haven't played six costs in destroy mm-hmm. like alongside deadpool in a very long time uh but the last time i tried which is month it worked Look, if it works, then... Because I was doing it I with mean, Beast oh. back then. So I was reducing yeah. my Deadpool to zero, but th- it could have been changed. I mean, I'm not going to argue if someone has recent da- data on it. I haven't tried it. Someone said it, and I was like, yeah, good enough. But look, the deck, it, whatever, however it works, this is going to be a great deck. Like, Armor and Cosmo can shake this out of the meta to keep it from being, like, too high, but this is going to be great, right? I, I think that's the problem with Destroy. It's if we're... Removing armor and Cosmo from the equation, it is top ten. I don't think destroy is like I think I would place it closer to top five than I would to top ten if counter cards didn't exist. I mean, it's probably why destroy has so many counter cards in the current meta. It's because mm-hmm. if there were not counter cards and it was just who's gonna put out the most points the most consistently, I think destroy would be up there amongst probably one of the best synergies. Uh, but if you're in a if you're in a bad day and you face armor and Cosmo three times in a row, you're gonna feel like Destroy is the worst deck in the universe. So, so for the time being, at least ahead of Bounce. Yes, it's hundred percent ahead of Bounce. If no armor, no Cosmo, probably somewhere around Bounce if there is, like, and because you have agency to play around it. I mean, you could play Beast to get Deadpool back if your opponent armors you. Uh, you could tech in Galactus so you can still destroy stuff. I mean, if it's precisely Deadpool, it's one thing. If it's destroy in general, destroy is extremely flexible now with Nimrod, Deadpool. I mean, you can adapt the deck to kind of mess around with the counter card. So I think like when Bounce was being punished by the current meta, destroy has the ability to adapt to the current meta. So it makes it better. Yeah. Right. Any destroy thoughts? I'd be interested yeah. to see. I mean, mine are more speculative. I'd be interested to see if destroyer versions of this also, with the additional uh, mm. being able to do that on five uh, with X twenty three. I think it would be somewhat interesting. Uh, but anyway, I, I I personally don't think that this deck is quite there yet, particularly because the X twenty three is one hundred percent speculative. So okay. So let's see our next deck. Our next deck is, hey, you asked for it, you got it. The Destroyer deck. The uh, It's the Shuri Nimrod deck that we've all seen a thousand times. So is this deck better than the last deck? Currently, yes. After X-23, I don't know. That's the thing. Yeah. Is like, because X-23 rewards you for destroying a ton every single turn. And that's what... Mm-hmm. Deadpool wants to do. Destroy can get, like, is happy destroying, like, twice in the game. Like, you go, if if you manage to just go, like, Wolverine on two, Deathlock on three, and then you just destroy uh, Nimrod with Destroyer or, like, Venom plus Carnage on six, it's enough for this deck. If yeah. you destroy Deadpool twice in the game, you don't even want to play it on turn six. Yeah. So I think right now in the current set of things, this deck is better. Once X-23 is part of the equation, I have no idea. I would say X-23 is going to tilt the balance toward Deadpool, but that's purely speculative. 
So I think the decks are close enough right now that I'm comfortable. Like, cause I don't think that like, let's pretend that um in the previous deck and I'll click back for our viewers. Let's pretend X23 is Yondu, right? Or Nova. Oof. I still think that like these two decks are extremely close in power. Oh no, I, w- I would put uh, Nimrod ahead of Deadpool I, currently. I'd put, like I'd put it ahead, but same tier. Yeah, same tier because all the decks we're talking about are the same tier. But I would still put yeah, that's fair. I, I would still put Destroyer like nine or ten, while Deadpool would be like eleven or twelve. All right, let's let's put it ahead, Roy. Unless you have any complaints, let's put that in the top spot for now, Destroyer. No complaints. Okay. Then let us go discard Dracula. Ooh. Oh, you haven't seen the, I... the latest list? The latest list is so spicy. I love it. What is it? The latest list is playing no El Cow. It's uh, Absorbing Man. Yeah. And no Wolverine. It's Gambit. Or no yeah. Nebula. Well, good, Gambit. And I think... So Gambit has to go on the list. Yeah. Because um, and it's the Zabu counter. Yes, exactly. And for the people like watching this uh it's it's not a better list overall it's just more suited to Mm -hmm. the meta so if you have a chance to try it remove nebula or wolverine depending if you like a one drop or if you like more discard for gambit and try absorbing man instead of Hellcow. and honestly like i feel like the problem with discard is flexibility like discord just wants to play with blank locations no tech cards let's slam points dracula and morbus are gonna get you the problem is that's not how we play Marvel Snap right now. And I don't know who created the list. Uh, I, I couldn't find the person. Uh, but I think the changes are extremely smart regarding the current meta. And being mm-hmm. able to find flexibility and like a way to answer the meta in a deck that's notably very inflexible is like so good. I'm 90% sure that's Specy's list. Oh, I don't know. I've, I've talked with so, Specy. I, I was mean, I- working on Phoenix recently, so... Okay. Yeah, Spessy uh, had a discard list that I was messing around with the start of the season that was running a deck, and, and so it's very, it was very, very similar to what we're talking about. Or at least I'm 90% sure the Gambit tech is his. So the idea is, if you early on, and it, he kept Nebula and Cut Wolverine, I'm pretty sure, but the idea is if you get Nebula out and they play Zabu, unless they happen to hit your location, right, like you end up with priority. You could even drop um, Colleen onto to make sure you get priority over that Zabu player. Once you have that priority... Um, your Gambit on three, they usually only have Zabu on the board, so your Gambit is very likely to, or guaranteed, to kill their Zabu. And, which means you win. Yeah, and there are more targets. I mean, against Move, you do the same thing mm-hmm. for Angela or Craven. You're extremely happy about it. And if you don't have yeah. priority, you could, like on three, you can hit a Silk or a Kitty Pride, and you're not mad. Mm-hmm. So currently, like I would say, amongst the top tier decks, there are a lot of targets where you just slam Gambit on three, and even if you don't discard like an apocalypse or something like that, you often end up on top. So all of that said, I think this is only ahead of bounce. I think it's worse than both destroy lists. Ooh, both? It's too linear and one bad location rocks it. So I I would agree, but I think the location problem is because people are playing Nebula and I really want to play Wolverine. So I have a shot at those bad locations. I don't think it fixes it. It's just personal opinion on it. Let's 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 go for full flexibility once we're on that road. Uh, I think it's below Destroyer. I think it will be below Deadpool once X twenty three is in, but without X twenty three, I'm not sure. I'm gonna keep it below the X twenty three for now, just because I just don't think like. I think it's a very high floor deck, but with no real ceiling. Uh, one more thought. I don't think that x23 goes in discard or matters in discard to you uh, like pure discard not like hybrid discard. like this one we're talking yeah this style of discard. and this one i don't know curiosity wise i'll remove nebula and try it to be honest just to see what mm-hmm. happens but yeah. i think it's much better in uh, in ella to try and cheat like big cards maybe if you don't get ella you can go six into six that kind of stuff because discord dracula has been built to function on a two three four five six basis so cheating mm-hmm. an energy is not going to really change it i mean if they give you five energy and you have dracula in hand you're probably going to play dracula anyway if they give you six yep. energy you're not going to play apocalypse because you want apocalypse in your hand so the difference between five and six is just you're going to play modok and float one instead of playing modok and floating zero so yeah i agree with it's probably not good 
uh, and it's pro- it's probably going to have better agency in Ella, but for the sake of it, let's just try it. Yeah, that makes sense to me. All right, let's keep going. We've got Evolved Lockjaw. This is a forgotten archetype, but it still puts up stats. It still wins games a snap. And I think um, I like that the meta eventually ended up where I landed, where I was like, I don't think the Doom and Odin are especially important in this deck. Like, you get so much more value out of Dracula. I I mean, I think Doom and Odin... And wave, like I mean, if you're playing these two, play wave, please. The like, double wave shuts down a lot of people. Uh, but I think since yeah. the move deck rose to popularity, they just beat you. they just beat your doom. Like the goal of doom mm-hmm. was, I can cheat on unplayable locations, and move just does it better than you. So it's better to play vision right now than to actually change the whole deck. Um, but there's one good thing about lockjaw in the current meta game is that it still has that simple to read ability and Mm -hmm. in a metagame where a lot of the decks can be really difficult to read because all the decks have that ability to really hide where they're going until like turn five six uh sometimes i know a lot of people uh have a hard time like knowing when they should retreat or when they should snap because the game is very blurry for like the majority of the six turns lockjaw has that ability where if you have lockjaw and wasp you probably should still snap so yeah. It makes it reassuring for a lot of people, and that, that can be a good trade for a deck. I also really like that there's just there's a win in there that goes Thor, Dracula, Jane into Magneto or Hulk, right? Like That wins a reasonable number yeah. of and Marvel Snap games, too. M- Magneto is one hell of a card in the current meta as well. It's, yeah. I think it's slowly building a case for being the best six right now. I think it's... I mean, unless we're counting... Like, Thanos is the best six because of what Thanos offers in addition to when like, played. Right, like not because right, <laughs> yeah. right, right, right. So I think Magneto is the best six in the game that you want to put on the board. I don't think that's even close anymore because as we'll get to eventually surfer and Darkhawk are like everywhere. Yes. I, I, and being I, able I, to control surfer and Darkhawk is amazing. I, I do agree. So if you have a deck that you're wondering, like, should I play Magneto in this? Yeah. I would say try it for sure. And you're probably going to keep it. So where does this one rank? I think this is number one of what we've talked about. At worst, number two. Uh, so right now we have what? Destroyer? So no, First Destroyer is first, then Death Pool, then Discard. Yeah, then so it's, I, I agree. It's first or second. I think in the current environment, when a lot of people are going to expect Destroy and maybe plan for it, Lockjaw is probably going to be much safer than any Destroy Synergy for the time being. Once Destroy is left a little bit like alone, we can rediscuss it. Yep, agreed. So I think, so I said this, I don't remember when or to whom actually, it was probably on this podcast, but someone was like, all right, so this is Destroy Month. I was like, no, 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 next month is Destroy Month. When everyone has moved on from the Destroy cards, that's when they're good. Yeah. They're not good when everyone expects them when they're brand new and shiny. Next month, like when we, if we do this list again, I expect Destroy to be significantly higher. But for this month, because people are expecting it and answering it, I it's agree. not as good as Lockjaw. Like basically, like the game. I think it's fi- like the game has five big synergies: like Discord, on Reveal, mm-hmm. Ongoing, Destroy, and Move. And they're all really good when left alone. But because they're the big ones in the game, the developers have planned a way to counter them very easily. So when you know about them, like I think each of them has one tech card that completely ruins them, except for move, because the tech card, I guess, was supposed to be Kingpin, and that one doesn't work so well, which is why we still haven't found a counter to move in the current metagame. Um, but otherwise, I completely agree with your with your assessment. It's like, if you don't think about it, you can be blown out by a destroy deck, but if you prep for it, you're just like, oh, this deck is shit. Yep. Any Lockshaw thoughts, thoughts right? Thoughts. Uh, Destroy is inherently more exploitable than Lockjaw, and particularly Lockjaw High Evolutionary. So I think any time that people really care to defeat, de- de- defeat Destroy, there we go, uh, they'll be able to do it. There's enough tools in the game. So I think the analysis is sort of spot on. I think the more powerful decks are targeted, the better Lockjaw gets. And the, when those decks fall out of popularity, the worse Lockjaw is going to get. Because I think at this point, they've done a decent job of putting like a cap at what Evolved Lockjaw is capable of doing. 
which for a long time they struggled to do. Um, so I, I generally agree with both of your analysis. Yes. All right. Negative surfer. Oof. We're starting to talk about the tough ones. <laughs> so, like, Legion's real bad for this deck. <laughs> there are a lot of things which are real bad for this deck. I mean, I faced yeah. this deck with normal Surfer and mm -hmm. Polaris, Spider-Man, Rogue, so many cards. I was like, okay, so this guy just negative me on three, and I'm about to snap him and just send him to the 8 cube realm. And that's not something that's supposed to happen. I mean, negative on turn three snap, people should leave. If people are not respecting that, it means the deck has <laughs> something wrong going for it. And <laughs> I, I think, like, we, we've been talking a lot about Destroy and the fact that you can add cards to make it look bad. I think the problem is the current metagame makes negative look bad already because move honestly bullies it. I mean, the ability to move around cards like Wong, like Iron Man, like Brood, these kind of cards against a deck that's based on placing its card plus wave on the comeback, which means you can't even hold in hand and just play explosively. I think the current environment is really difficult for Negative Surfer. And we kind of saw it with so many people complaining about the weekend missions where they were like, oh my god, I can't win a game with Negative Surfer. Well, it's not because the deck is bad. I think the deck is actually pretty good. But the current environment is going to make your life a living hell, to be honest. Yeah, I think this is an easy cut. It's just, so this was the most popular deck in the game for like a two-week period. And that two-week period is within the realm of what we're talking about, so I felt like it had to be here. But like, this is the bottom deck of what we've talked about, I think, pretty clearly. And it's hard for a Surfer deck to be the bottom deck, because Surfer is insanely good right now. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really like, it's important to understand, it's an environment, it's a metagame thing. If it was mm -hmm. just like, nobody plays disruptive cards... Negative would probably be tier one. It's the highest points you can get, or close enough. Yeah, it's up there amongst the highest, like highest potential. It's just that potential rarely realizes currently, if ever. Negative thoughts, Roy. Uh, the dog is around, and that is going to make this deck, I think, worse. It's the dog. Oh, With that's Co Cosmo. Okay, I was like, Cosmo, we just talked Cosmo, about Lockjaw, right? but what? <laughs> Uh, no, the, the other dog, the okay. actual dog, yeah. versus the human transformed into a dog-like creature. The not fun uh, dog, Cos okay. Yeah, the, yes. the, the death of fun dog. The opposite of real dogs in real life. Um, <laughs> and I, I think this this deck, uh, I have always found it to be like a little less consistent because there's so many more points of interaction than other negative decks. Um, and so with Cosmo back in the meta to answer destroy, I think this deck just does not belong in a sort of top 10 list right yeah. now. Doesn't mean it's not strong. Oh, and by the way, uh, I'm, I'm seeing the date, so I'm guessing you took the decks from last week's tier list. Um, mm -hmm. We discussed it already, but like, if people want, probably try Crystal in this deck. Crystal has been oh, doing yeah, nice 100%. Things. So the problem is Crystal has to be for... Um, like Rogue or Ironheart. Also, I like Psylocke much better than Zebu in this list. Because if you are going to get a turn 7, Wong into a Psylocke is a phenomenal way to I set agree. yourself up. I agree. Like, it could be... It, it, it's cheeky, but it's highly surprising. It works. It works. Yeah, it works. It works. Like, like people also just run. That's how I completed the mission. I played... Um, whether I had anything or not, I played uh, Wong, and then I played Psylocke on her, and then I snapped after I Psylocked, and then I just let people run away. That's how I completed my weekend missions. Because they were like, you got Mr. Negative and 8 energy? Hmm, thanks. But like, I'm, I'm going to head out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I don't wanna... Nothing good happens to me from here. It's like, well, nothing good has happened to me either, but I'll take Wait, my cues. Eight. Thank you. Turn 7, you have 9, don't you? Yeah, sorry. Math is hard. I teach English. <laughs> no one ever actually beat it to that last turn at that point. <laughs> they ran away. <laughs> they stopped at eight. When once I started going like Wong, Mystique, Psylocke, they they forgot I didn't have points. They just saw the energy and they left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just like I, I, you probably have nothing in hand at that point too because you spent all your stuff doing that. But hey, but it remains scary. Like I, I, there's one card and I don't know what it is, and that one card might cost eleven. And no. <laughs> 
<laughs> it, yeah, you can you can almost play an unreduced. I, I, I death. think someone asked it. Oh, in, like, uh, in the official Discord, whether like higher than six cost card would exist, and uh, Glenn said it's not a it's not a it's not a, a if it's a when. So I guess mm-hmm. that kind of combo are gonna come. I mean, seven is normal. I mean, we have magic in the game. Like I could easily see some specific decks with electro with magic with that kind of stuff play for seven and i mean we have wave you could make a 20 power a 20 cost card and you just wave it and you could play it for four but it would be fun to see stuff that would cost eight nine ten i don't know if it would completely break the game but i think it would be nice puzzles like can you make it consistent enough and stuff like that and then it just loses the cosmo anyway there's a thing i want to see in the game eventually um but that's a longer conversation for another day. So let, let's uh, keep going. But I want to see team affiliations as like outside of the game, you stick them on and they change something about the way your deck functions. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, for, for Roy, something like an agenda where it's just like, all right, you, uh, you start with six energy and then go backwards or something like that, right? Like, oh, kind of like, like a whatever. high evolutionary kind of style, but different. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like, and just you, you, you decide. I'm a. We're playing it. I'm playing Avengers. You're playing X Men, and Avengers does X tier decks building. Sure. And uh, Aven- like, I think it would be very cool, very easy, and it opens up design space. Like, I mean, if the game keeps working and they keep having to release cards, eventually they're going to have to get to some kind of designs that are extremely creative because mm-hmm. they would have consumed all the more like basic ones. Yeah. Next thing. With the next deck is two decks because uh, I started with this Lambie's new Patriot deck, and that one's real good. But then the second one, the uh, Yasui, a Japanese player, won Kawa's tournament. I believe won the tournament. With, I, I know, uh, I'm hundred percent sure he beat Lambie in the semifinals and made it to the yes. final. But I'm not sure who won the finals. Me neither. I'm not hundred percent sure. I'm pretty sure it won, but I'm not hundred percent sure. Either way, like. It was piloted excellently. So this is the deck that basically, like, we can, the shell is the same. It wants to go forge into brood into absorbing man, and then find ways to pump those further. Yeah, I mean, that um, makes this this version says I do patriot and surfer. The uh, previous version just has patriot and then says I'm going to run blue marvel. Okay, same same idea. What you care about in these decks is the um i mean the the deck from lemby really looks like iron patriot from before mm-hmm. except mm-hmm. like there's basic stuff i mean I've, I've played the when they change absorbing man that's one of the first things i wanted to do because i really like that combo it's the debris into absorbing man and i love it and that's the only thing that makes me sad is that yes we isn't playing that like yeah. but if i was playing the deck i would probably get luke cage or legion out and just play debris and just have that combo in just because i think it's fun so i think look this deck is be running cosmo in two days too but um i think it's re- like my favorite thing in this deck is that it's running loot cage because um it protects you from your own shadow king so you yeah. can ruin move you can ruin all this stuff and then like your loot cage is like mm, no we're fine thank you I mean, I, like it's i don't know how much unreal. you need it because patriot just gives you the power as an ongoing yeah. uh but yeah i mean for a long time uh this was something tannis so, control was doing with valkyrie uh, and that yeah, but for, Forge perfectly. Brood, right? Forge Brood uh, yeah. and uh, Surfer. So, like, you have options. And, like, cause a thing I've been doing more and more lately is Surfering on 5. Surfering So on I can five. do other stuff on 6. Like, if um, like if I know that if they have a magic out and I want to uh, play Legion on 6, I'll just Surfer on 5. I'll, like, Luke and Surfer, right? <sighs> And at okay. that point, obviously, I'm not playing. I'm not playing Shadow King. But like in just various situations, I found it right more often. Like not often, right? But like to just surfer and two on five, so that I can do something else powerful on six. Yeah, my you can get behind that. There are a lot of cards that I want to try in this deck, but I really like the the look of it. Obviously, it's going to be difficult to to judge it because it came out like basically this weekend. And we're on Monday, yeah. and I don't think... Like, I, I personally have zero games on it. I'm going to be completely honest. I'm at less than 10. Yeah. I played it for a while today. Let's... Guess what? It won. A lot. Yeah. Like, it, it felt... Like... So, it's also one of those easy playline decks, right? Like, if you see Forge and either Sinister or Brood, you're good. And if you see Brood and Absorber Man, you're good. And if you see Sinister and Absorber Man, you're good. And if you don't see any of those combos, you're probably just taking a walk for low cubes. I mean, I'm 
almost mad X23 is coming out tomorrow because that means I'm going to have to wait until I can test this because I'm definitely testing X23 first. But it's not often that I look at a deck and I'm like, oh, I want to try this. Mm -hmm. So I'm really happy. I'm discovering new things on this podcast. Everyone should come in. (laughs) Thank you. So I'm going to argue that, I mean, where does this go? Like, Mm -hmm. it's clearly, like, I think it's a, straight up better deck right now than lockjaw the, is that crazy no I, I don't think it's crazy like we we haven't gotten into the top decks that we agreed on but i yeah. mean i guess a lot of people can guess probably everyone can guess surfer is not going to be in the wild cards surfer is going right. to be in the ones that we know are top of the class so right now if you see surfer you immediately are talking like about a good deck i think like the the forge brood surfer core um is incredible i think shadow king is and valkyrie are gaining a ton of momentum compared to mm-hmm. shang chi because armor is being more and more popular so these two can bypass armor there are a lot of things to to like about this deck so even if i haven't played it i would i purely like uh, uh on theory yeah i would put it like as high as we can on the list of decks we didn't agree on so of the ones that are so far, just to catch everybody up, we've got N number seven, because we're remember we're doing seven to ten, Surfer Patriot, in number eight, Lockjaw, in number nine, Destroyer, and in number ten, Deathpool. So Deathpool's about to get kicked off the list, I'm pretty sure. But yes. that is our list right now. And now we're on the Thanos control. Uh, this is the W list that was everywhere for a while. Does this have any real business being on the list anymore? No. I mean it's I think it's still a good deck. Like and mm-hmm. if you spend time because learning a Thanos deck is actually I think much more difficult than learning a lot of other decks. So if you spend time learning this one, you're probably good if you keep playing it. Like I definitely think this is a deck that can get you to infinite. It can probably get you a couple infinity tickets as well. Like no problem about it. But I feel like Thanos control death I mean all the Thanos decks, and this is why we have so many archetypes to talk about, there's a lot of movement movement in that synergy right now there's a lot of cards that are being tried etc i mean everyone is trying to get it back to what it was before move raised up as well now it's it's a thanos game again so i think a lot of the thanos deck we're going to talk about are declining currently and so even if we rank them in top 10 i feel like if we rediscuss this in a few days they probably will be out so out of caution i'm probably always going to be like on the lower end of the spectrum for thanos currently yeah uh so i'm that way with most of the thanos but we'll get there Roy, do you have anything to add about this particular list i never really was super fond of this list so i'm happy for it to sort of fall by the wayside okay all right uh this is the august snap battle arena winner this is the thanos move control uh i'm gonna like just go first here so and be blunt I think this deck is really good against Darkhawk and not really good against anything else. It's a mid-deck otherwise. Played phenomenally by the pilot, the creator. But I don't think it's a, a special deck at all. Can I be extremely mean? Yeah. When you have the best deck in the game is a move synergy, I don't understand mm-hmm. why you need to play this. Yep. Like, I, it's not a bad deck, is just there's a better way to play move currently. So if you enjoy the deck, if you look at the deck and you're like, oh, that looks like a ton of fun, go for it. If you're looking for the best move, annoy your opponent through moving their cards kind of deck, we all know it's move legion. So yeah. unfortunately, when there's just a straight up better deck, I don't understand why this needs to kind of take a spot. This looks like a brew to me. Yeah. Well, look, it won a major tournament. So, Yeah, that's no shade. Yeah. It just feels like one person's deck that they're very good at piloting. And congratulations to them. That's awesome. But it just doesn't feel like a overall presence in the metagame. I've, I personally have never faced it. And I play every day. I have. And I beat it. And I played it. And it's not that strong. All right. Uh, the Human Spiders second place Thanos draw. This deck, I like a lot. I don't know if it makes the list. I wouldn't be against it being number 10. This is the version that's running um, a little death 
package with uh, Killmonger. It's running a little move package with Spider-Man and Vision. And besides that, it is your classic old-school Thanos Lockjaw. Once I think it's good. Great and good. I, I agree. It's probably a good deck. I just would probably rank it below Lockjaw itself. Oh, yeah, 100%. Then it's, it's low <laughs> yeah, then it's kind of the exact same thing that I said for the previous one. Like, I don't understand why do we have to rank this when we have Lockjaw that's just straight up late. If you like Thanos and you want to play it, if you want to have a different feeling about it, sure. But otherwise, there's a better Lockjaw deck. All right. All right, any thoughts on this one? Just feels like another cool brew. This is the one. Thanos Death is the one. X-23 or no X-23? I think X-23 is an obvious in this deck. Every but this deck time. is perfectly fine with Nova, right? I think this is the deck I want to argue should be number 10. Ooh. Uh, I think this deck is great. Every time I've played this deck, and I've played this deck a lot in the pre-X-23 days, this deck is so tempo strong. I think I agree. Like, I think it's a good deck. It's probably the best out of the Thanos right now, in my book. Yeah. I, I, I agree. Like, so it's just, death gets cheap so much more easily in this deck than anywhere else. Right? Like, your death gets cheap and your null gets huge. And if you can play a death and a null at the end of the game together, you usually win that game. If you can play a death and a Shang-Chi together at the end of a game of Snap, you usually win that game. And like, there's just the tempo of cards like Wolverine and Bucky and like Venom being able to be huge and eat whatever you want. Like there's just, and the extra energy of um, soul stone. Like this deck does a lot of powerful, positive things. Like, I think this is what I want to be number 10 and I don't hate putting it above destroyer, but I, but I'm borderline. Mm, I think they're different. They have different strengths and weaknesses. Uh, but I think once again, like it's the same thing as what we said about Deadpool. I think once we add X23 to the mix, this deck will be able to run like cards like Galactus or like mm -hmm. it, it's going to be able to be much more surprising. It's going to be able to have much more agency. So to me, this is probably the deck that wins the most out of X23 because it's already has some ramp element to it with Time Stone. So it's already like it already planned it in the past. So he already knows how to work with it. I could say it this way. So for sure, I would say this is, yeah, I would say this is the best destroy deck out there right now. So I would at least rank it above the other two. So if that puts him at ten, let's put him at ten. That, put, that puts it at nine. Okay, what's so ten is with the destroyer, and which I mean, I believe means we're done. Yeah, that's our that's our ten, Ooh. which means our four are number seven is Surfer Patriot, number eight is Lockjaw. Number nine is Thanos Death, and number ten is Destroyer. Yeah, sounds about right. All right. Then let's move on to your number, what is that, five deck? Six. Well, now we have to figure out the top six. We have to rank these. Well, I, I think we They're, agreed on a lot of them. Yes. Uh, yes. So num in no order, these are alphabetical, and then we'll go through deck by deck as we have to do it. Number one is uh, Darkhawk Good Stuff. That Everyone knows the list. If you don't know Darkhawk Good Stuff, I feel like you haven't been playing Marvel Snap very long. Welcome <laughs> to the site. Thank you for uh, <laughs> listening to the podcast. You will get so used to Darkhawk Good Stuff, I promise. Don't worry about it. It's the deck with all the rocks. <laughs> um, number two is In Shinot. That's the newer versions, which are not running Moon Girl anymore, but are running um, Magic into Leech, into Skip. And then She-Hulk and either Infinite or Evolved Hulk. Then number three, we have Legion Move. We've talked about Legion Move all episode, which should give you a hint as to what its ranking is. <laughs> yeah. It's the one that is running uh, Kitty with um, Angela and Silk and Craven, and saying, let's play ping pong while I put a bunch of power on the board. It is so good and so fun. Uh, four, we have Sarah Miracle. There's a thousand varieties. Sarah Miracle is basically trying to put a lot of power on the board at the end of the game while also do, having enough control to remove your stuff. We've got Sarah Surfer, and we've got some interesting versions of that. Um, basically, play threes, end game, play Surfer, win. 
And lastly, we have Shuri. And we've got some different brews of Shuri. The most common is Shuri Red Skull. We've been seeing a lot of Shuri Kitty again in the meta. There's always, always, always Shuri brews near the top of the game. And we saw Shuri so, destroy already. So, Yeah, that's true. That's very true. So that maybe we'll see a little more of. All right. The first deck is Good Card Stature. This is the, uh, excuse me, this should be running America. Dan, why is your version not running America? Um, oh, because you're running Killmonger in the America slot. Got to be running America in this. You need Zabu on tour. The deck doesn't work. I mean, most people are cutting Stature and Black Bolt for America. That's fair. That's fair, too. Yeah, oh, whatever. Yeah, and then you run Legion as a five. Okay, there's a million options. Yeah. Look, I mean, it's good so stuff. Just different. play good stuff. Yeah, play good stuff. Play the Darkhawk package. Play good cards around it. Make sure you see Zabu where possible with game. Um, three weeks ago, this would have been number one with a bullet. Three weeks ago, this would have been number one and would, wouldn't have even discussed it. Right now, yeah. it's eh, somewhere in between three to five. If we're saying... Decks are playing are played optimally. Like mm -hmm. I think it's four or five. I think Inchinot takes it when we play perfectly. The thing is, playing perfectly with Inchinot is extremely difficult. So I, I also want to future proof this mildly because like Darkhawk is an actively bad card if your opponent is running Silver Samurai. Yes. And like Wait, what? Why? Silver Samurai discards lowest power. Oh, you mean opponent? Yes. Opponent, yeah. So you did. You get to discard. I mean, you can't play Dark Hawk, your own Dark Hawk with Silver Samurai, but that's fine. You just build well, you're gonna Dark Hawk, Zabu right? into it, but that's going to be fun because now we... But you don't want to Zabu into Dark Hawk on three because now you're just sitting there waiting for Shang and Enchantress, right? That, that's where it's fun. Like, it's actually going to create some interaction where it's not an easy choice of just keep Dark Hawk forever in your hand. Yeah, I, but I think that means Dark Hawk's worse, right? Probably. Like, it's fun, but it's not It's not good for the overall strategy of the deck. Probably, probably. So. But All yeah, right, let's, let's get something to compare this one to. Yep. I mean, I'm pretty sure what is my 1, 2, and 3. And then I, I think I have my 6. And so this one is going to be 4. Like, the good card is going to be 4 Wait, to me just let, because of the light. Let's just compare shirt. these two. Okay. Let's just compare these two. In, in She Not, I think, is better than Dark Hawk and stuff. Yeah, I think... To me, Inchinot is third. By the way, it, like I'm, I'm just gonna update people on list because this is the previous tier list. Like, let me know if mm -hmm. if it's annoying. Um, no. But Cyclop has taken over uh, Cosmo for some reason in the deck, and it made it so much better. Like the stats for this week have exploded. Mm -hmm. And yeah, to me, Inchinot is three. I think right now, behind so two the that we can't really argue with. <laughs> yeah, we know what one and two are. I'm pretty sure. Uh, so. It's worth knowing that in Sh like because of Leech, Shang-Chi is not a threat to the She-Hulk and Infinite. And if Shang-Chi is not a threat to those cards, then your Darkhawk deck has no chance of winning. Because your Darkhawk is now a 4-0 stuck in your hand, right? Yeah. The, and now you have no Shang. So like Leech is extremely good in the in the current metagame. And it also protects your uh, magic from Legion Storm, Scarlet Witch, shenanigans. Like, that allows you to safely pass on 6 and know there will be a turn 7. Unless they top deck Legion. Of course. Well, I mean, then, unless Which, they top deck Shang-Chi or Darkhawk. Right, right, right. Yeah, I guess that's fair, too. But even then, you should still be taller than any Darkhawk. Yeah, right? and... Like, unless we've got specific for, locations. For the Shang-Chi problem, I mean, there's armor in the deck. I like Cyclops, but you can also play Cosmo, which means if you have both cards, Shang-Chi is rarely going to be a problem. And on top of that, you will very likely have priority as well. So I honestly think like there's no excuse for this deck to... Like when it's played optimally, which we said that's the realm we are considering it, I don't see like where this deck is below top three when everyone plays at the same level. So I... So what's crazy to me is that this just beats, um, right? So let's say you don't see magic and you play, you're running Cyclops. So you drop, who cares, right? Like um, ar armor on three, Cyclops on four. Oh, you run then you play, she -Hulk on, you play She-Hulk on five. Yeah, shock or whatever. You play She-Hulk on five and Hulk on six, and you're still winning a lot of games. I mean, like the, this is the why I like Shocker wins. on three. Like you go armor on two, Shocker on three, pass four, infinite behind armor, and then Hulk on another lane. 
That's silly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, th- this right. this is why the deck is kind of like so interesting in a way. It's because mm-hmm. it's not just um, like it's not just a, a slam points. Like you can slam points three or four different ways. Plus you have some disruption. Plus we talked about how destroy is probably going to be super popular, and we're talking about a deck that is not going to tech armor. It's playing armor already. I mean, this deck shatters destroy by the way oh, it's yeah. built. So there's just a ton of upsides. All right. Anything about this one? Uh, I would definitely put this above the previous deck. Yeah. So pretty inarguably. I think three is a good place to start with it. So also, like, um, other argument for right now, by the way, is um, we should, as a general rule, be um, looking at smaller creators more, right? Revis isn't tiny, but Revis made this deck over a month ago, and because Revis isn't super famous yet, like, no one noticed. But, like, if you were paying attention to Revis, like, I did a video on a version of this a month and a half ago, or over a month ago now, um, like, you would have had this deck, and I didn't play it enough to, like, actually realize how good it was either, because there's a lot of damn decks in this game. But, like, if you pay attention to, like, certain smaller creators, you get to be ahead of the meta, and you get to take advantage of this when other people don't know it exists. I, I think the main thing with this deck, it's really, like, how difficult it is to play compared to other decks. Like, compared mm-hmm. to Good Cards Dark Hawk, honestly, like, I think once you play, like, 15, 20 games of Good Card Dark Hawk, which in Marvel Snap is about like an hour of your life, uh, you are pretty close to where you're naturally gonna end up with the deck. While in other decks, like it's gonna take much, much longer to get to that level of play. And I think Inchinot is one of those decks where you probably have to spend a few days because you have to learn basically all the other decks because you have to know what to be scared of. You have to know what are the answers. You have yeah. to know a lot of things. And so I think this is also what made the deck be like more difficult to become popular and to catch fire because I think a lot of people tried it and were like, oh, the deck is shit. And sorry to say it, but it wasn't the deck. <laughs> yeah, that's very fair. <laughs> all right. We are next at Move Legion. Number one. Yes. I mean, the, so the, the is... numbers. Like, it's just, there's, it, it's difficult to just argue with the numbers for the first two weeks of big in Japan. This deck has dominated. You look at ladder stats. You look at conquest stats. You look at tournaments. Hmm. You look at whatever you want. And ah, this... Is there a problem? What? Yeah, yeah. Why is Nightcrawler in this version? Uh, I do not. What's missing? Something is missing. I do not know. Why is Night- yeah, I don't remember what's missing. Why is Nightcrawler in this version? Uh, There's supposed to be one different card, and I can't remember what it is off the is top of my head. Ghost Spider? No. It's no. not a one cost. No. It's. I'll find it. Give me two seconds. Probably, Keep talking about the deck. I'll figure it out. I mean, I can. I send the deck to someone like earlier today, so. I have. I think a, it's pretty inarguable, though, that this vision. is where you want to be. Vision. You're right. In the yeah, this, right like, this is last week's list like the this week are fully updated mm-hmm. uh but yeah i mean this deck makes a lot of points it makes them flexibly can play around your opponent's setups with spider-man and if you add polaris to the mix you can even annoy them that way you have legion to annoy them even more uh good luck trying to land shang chi on pretty much anything like because if the your opponent is smart he's going to keep his angela at eight and he's going to lose priority, and he's going to get it big at this point. Uh, same for Craven. If you suspect shang you don't have to boost your Craven early on. I mean, there's a lot of things that... Like, you have a lot of agency with this deck, and you have a lot of points. So, yeah, best deck in the game right now. Right? No, I, I think it's inarguable that it's the best deck in the meta. And uh, it's sort of what you base the strength of your own deck upon and i think it's actually coming relatively close to dark dark hawk good stuff in the sense of the number of just efficient cards that now exist in move mm-hmm. there's maybe only what two move synergy cards in here craven and 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 miles and silk well, 
Silk, yeah. Silk, I don't think, is a move synergy card, though. Like, you don't... Oh, when you get you your Craven and Angel that... out to 10, it's pretty good as a synergy move yeah. card. Yeah. <laughs> but, but you can move Silk around without playing other cards. Like, if you oh, don't okay. see Craven and you don't see Spider-Man, like, you know, that's what I'm saying. Like, those yeah, cards they don't play. Right. Yeah, but that's the cards. that's the strength of the deck is most cards are good on their own. They are yes, incredible when they're played together, but almost all the cards are good. Sp- I mean, Spider-Man is a five power. Uh, Polaris is a five power. Vision is an eight. Legion is an eight. Like it's apart from Shang Chi, but I mean, we're not going to start on Shang Chi or this podcast is going to be seven hours. All these <laughs> cards have very good power for their cost plus ability. Yeah. That that was what my argument was was just that this is close to Dark Hawk. Like, and, um, but I think the move package provides it with more tricks than Dark Hawk has now. And I think that's what gives it its edge. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with it. So, Sarah Control. This is our nice standard Sarah Control. Uh, this is at the bottom of our list right now, right? I agree. Like, to me, that's number six. Uh, yeah. For several reasons, like it's too easy. It's not too easy, but a lot of the good decks that we're seeing are really good at losing priority if they need to, mm-hmm. which makes Sarah Control not useless, but much much worse when he doesn't have priority. Um, and the point ceiling, like if you don't land the counter card, your ceiling is just weaker than most of the other decks. <laughs> like that, yep. like it, it has to be said this way is. When you're playing against any of the other decks on our list today, the what's going to happen is if you don't play the perfect game, you're probably going to lose. That probably means that your deck is a little weaker if you have as a pilot to like outplay your opponent. So, I mean, like Spider-Ham is still a card, right? And Spider-Ham and hits that. Sour or Shang-Chi, and it's just like good games. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Have a wonderful day. I'm going to that. Yes. enjoy your cubes. And like, and they can just do that turn two every game. And like, eventually they'll hit a Killmonger and you're like, ha ha, got him. But like, <laughs> now guess what? You don't have Shang and Sarah. Yep. Um, like it's, it's fine. It's still tier one, but like, and I, but like, I think once we know more about these other lists, I don't think it's even six. I think it's more like seven or eight on the list. I think X twenty three could push it. Yeah, like it, it might push yeah. it a little further down the list. But yeah, for like the current tier list, like there was a kind of a, a, a bit of a gap. Is like the this for the six decks that we have here, five of them are tier one and they're posting like really close performances. And then you have Sarah, which is above tier two, like pretty mm-hmm. reasonably above the other decks in tier 2, but significantly below the other ones in tier 1. So Sarah is kind of her own zone where she's like, kind of, like, I don't even call it, like she's like a small country. There's like tier 1 country, tier 2 country, and she's like a small country in between, and she doesn't really know where she wants to go right now. Yeah, look, I think that the Patriot list that we talked about and I, the other lists are just going to be better. Like, I don't think they're there yet, but like, I think within a week, if we did this again next week, I think we would be arguing about Sarah for making the list with those other decks instead of it. I could here. completely this see is the that. We- yeah, it's the weakest Sarah's been in months. I agree. Hard to disagree. So the next two are together. These are Surfer uh, Fazer released a really cool list that I can't seem to lose with. Um, this is the Evolved <laughs> Surfer, um, and. This is Den's straight up regular surfer. So I actually want to focus on the uh, evolutionary one because I think it's highlighting what surfer is becoming. And we already started to see that in an earlier deck. What surfer is starting to become is a good stuff package you can just stick into decks. You grab you grab surfer and like three other threes instead of running Zabu and three other fours. And you just have a good stuff package that you can sort of slot in in this case, slotting with evolutionary. And like, this is the best gene deck gray deck I've ever played by like an order of magnitude because like you do something like early plays of sunspot and uh, misty. And then you go gene on three and you either Cyclops or Cosmo and you're just like, all right, good luck. Or you just brood and say, I'll play whatever, wherever I want. You spend a couple turns playing there, and then I'll leech you. 
Yeah, I think like since Forge got buffed, people realized how good Surfer was, and mm-hmm. it kind of pushed Surfer even outside of the Forge realm, where people were like, "Oh, but this is just good. Let me try this here. Let me try this there. Let me try this." And so I think Surfer is just in a great, great place right now. And yeah, I think it's undoubtedly number two. Yeah, I think it's number two. I think it loses to the Inshinot deck more often than not. Leech is a bitch. Um, <laughs> for to say. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. It's hard but, to argue. <laughs> but, like, okay, right? Like, that's one matchup. I think, like, it's got a good matchup into even move. It's just... Really Shadow good, King is incredible King. In, into move. Yeah, Shadow and King I mean, destroys Personally, me. like, the, the list... Well, I mean, it's called Den, but I literally just remove Nova and Killmonger. It's no crazy deck building mm-hmm. here. But, yeah. Like, the the trick is just, they play Craven, you play Craven right in front of it, and you're like, all right, buff it for me. I'm just going to take care of the other lanes. Thanks for putting in the work. And I've seen a lot of people just literally, like, blank on it. I mean, you could also, like, if you wanted to beat the Inshinot deck, right, you add, um, you've got Storm, and you just re-add, um, why is this escaping me? You re-add Goose in one of the two drop slots, right? You can meta against that deck just fine. For sure, and like you'll you'll win, right? Like there's you can like there's ways to do this. Just because we're choosing not to, because that's not the meta problem right now. Like Craven is in your version because like if you can put your Craven in their Craven's lane, then they're both equal power, right? Yeah. So yeah, that that's the yeah. sign of a great deck. Like you have a good core that's a lot of points, and then you can build kind of however you want right now around that core, and you can tack around other decks. You can bring in another core and just make a mix. You can counter something specifically. You can include, like, general tech cards. I mean, Surfer is just an incredible position. Like, maybe this current version of Surfer, maybe it's stronger than the one we had in December before it was nerfed, to be honest. I think it might be. So, what it's competing against isn't as strong as Zabu was. Yeah, I mean, Zabu just took... Surfer out yeah, of the meta. When Zabu, Zabu was... released, pre like to me, pre nerf Zabu was mm-hmm. the best card in the history of Marvel Snap. Yep, no question. But yeah, I mean, Surfer is in such a good place. Like if you're not playing Surfer right now, I think you're missing out, or at least not experimenting with Surfer. Yeah, and I think like we're at that point where like if the argument is, but I don't like Surfer. I mean, unless you don't like the card itself. It's really hard not to find a deck of Surfer you're not mm-hmm. gonna like. There are like seven of them right now. Yeah, and they work like and there's also, still um, Wong Surfer, right? Like Wong Surfer is a real deck. Yes. There's negative surfer we talked about earlier. We've got the Patriot Surfers. We've got now Evolutionary Surfer. Yeah. Like, like you, you can pick. Like there 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 are a lot of them. Yeah. Let's not get Surfer nerfed, though, and let's get oh, to our last deck. No. Our last deck is... Ooh, it's not our last deck, because this is a double up. Because uh, I actually want to talk about this. Sorry, making sure this actually works. Excuse me, as I click back and forth. We've got our standard Shuri Sauron. We've got Kitty Shuri Sauron, which I didn't bother to post. It's the same deck, except it runs Kitty and Angela. And then it runs Forge and uh, uh, Hulkbuster. Sure. So that it can Taskmaster the Kitty. I don't actually think the deck is very good, but a lot of people are pushing it right now. Um, I agree. Like I, I, but, uh, I think in the like in the sea of the flexible decks and the complicated game plans, this is just reassuring. I think. Like mm-hmm. I, I think for a lot of people, it's a deck that you don't have to think that much about who your opponent is. You just get your stuff on the way, and it's going to give you a lot of points. But I mean, the more like we see Surfer, and I think people don't realize it, but Shadow King is gonna hit you very, very hard. <laughs> yeah. Like, so, I think like this deck is on the is on the the downfall, but for now, like it has more upside than downsides. But I think the downsides are catching up real quick. Yeah, I think we're probably gonna end up with this in number five, but I want to show you this version because. Uh, and Crystal is either Crystal or Magic. I cannot decide. It's one of the two. But um, this 
beats the living shit out of Dark Hawk and out of the Moveless. Like, absolutely smashes it. I, I would agree. I mean, I've had incredible resu- uh, results with the Phoenix. I'm playing a completely different list than yours, so we're not, we're not yeah. going to get into it. But I think Phoenix is really getting into Move Legion. Because you're just like, yeah, you want to move my cards? Sure. Like, please. Yeah. You just get benefit, <laughs> right? And like, so I decided, for uh, listeners who can't see it, I decided my backup plan was I've got Shuri Nimrod and Shuri Red Skull with Taskmaster. So like, if I can get my Phoenix Force going on four, right? Um, if I'm running magic, then I can just go on turn five and like, just be like, okay, Shuri Nimrod and then eat it on turn uh, turn seven. Or I can just go Shuri Red Skull. Yep. And Leech doesn't bother it because almost everything important is already out by then. Um, it's 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 crazy powerful. If I could get people to play this deck, I think it would be uh, higher on the list. I'll, you know what? I'll try. Like I think this is better. I think it's better than Inshanot. Um, mind you, excuse me. This is hugely important. It's not nearly as good on ladder. Oh, yeah. this deck benefits amazingly from knowing what's in your opponent's deck. Okay, so it's a conquest deck. Yeah, well, because like your opponent's not running Killmonger, right? Now, sometimes my game plan, if I know my opponent's not running Killmonger, is I'll go Human Torch, um, armor, kill my Human Torch on three, uh, Phoenix Force, move it until the end of the game, and then just Taskmaster it. And that's my whole game. Yeah, right? I mean, like, there's nothing you can do when I've got a 56 power Human Torch and a 56 the, the, power Taskmaster. This is literally what I do with my Phoenix Force, except I do it with Beast and Zola. Yeah, like, that works perfectly fine. But yeah, I, I completely agree. Like, uh, like, and I think this is probably the future. Not necessarily this list. I haven't tried it yet. But yeah, this style. Uh, yeah, I, th- I think like Shuri Sauron is a really good deck because it makes a lot of points. But mm-hmm. eventually, you're too predictable, and you're gonna get punished. And I think at some point we're gonna enter that part where people are still confident the deck is good, but the counters are already there. And you get punished so much for snapping, and you lose like four and eight cubes all over the place. And this is where people think a deck is completely bad. When I think it's not the deck got bad, it's just you need to keep up with the metagame. And I think like throwing this little twist and finding new ways of abusing Shuri while keeping like the important parts of Shuri Sauron is how you keep up with the metagame and is how you manage to like stay relevant. Is it crazy to put this above Dark Hawk good stuff right now? Well, I haven't tried it, so it's your podcast. In general, the, the, the theory, the, the gist of it, not necessarily this specific version, but like an advanced Shuri Sauron that's not, or excuse me, not Sauron, Shuri Red Skull. I think it Like, I think the best could. version has to run Phoenix Force. I think it could be like uh, Dark Hog because you have ways to answer Shang-Chi you literally don't care about Enchantress, and you should be able to fight off like in points without too many problems but i haven't tried it so i'll i'll leave it up to you i i, I won't argue over it like honestly like if it's just who's four gonna, who's five that's fine <laughs> i'm gonna argue that it's four over five right. especially because this way the commons can yell at us yeah it's important to drive engagement <laughs> there you go the same person who's angry about jeff the land shark all right glazer what are our top 10 Marvel Snap decks for August in the year of our Lord 2023? Number 10 is Destroyer. That is the Shuri Nimrod Destroyer package running Zola, etc. Number 9 is Thanos Death. It is a base Thanos Death. Sometimes you run Galactus, sometimes you don't. X23 will slot right into this deck. Number 8 is Evolved Lockjaw. You've seen the deck. It was the meta deck for a while. Still runs Spider-Ham. Still runs Dracula. Number seven is the brand new Surfer Patriot things, which I think are the future of Patriot decks that are trying to go forge into Absorbing Man. Sorry, forge into Brood into Absorbing Man, and then pump those cards as high as you can. Number six is the rapidly falling Sarah Control. It's still running the Hitmonkey package as a way to get top end points. Number five is Darkhawk Good Stuff. The previous number one deck has taken a hit as things know how to answer it and it no longer puts out top end power for a mid range deck as the other mid range decks have caught up. 
Number four is Shuri, and we're talking Shuri Red Skull, and we think that Shuri likely goes with cards like Phoenix Force now in the meta in the best versions. I think it also goes with Nimrod, but I'm willing to be convinced that the Nimrod package isn't necessary. It ends up working really well, and it has outs to everything. However, it is significantly better in Conquest than on Ladder. Um, number three is the Inshinot deck, which is trying to go Magic into whatever, into Leech, into uh, She-Hulk and either Hulk or Infinite, and sometimes you can use Shocker for extra completely insane shenanigans in that deck. You also have our number two deck, which is Silver Surfer, which is the most versatile deck in the game right now. There are a thousand different Surfer decks, and basically all of them are around tier one. You can uh, put Surfer as a package like Darkhawk into other packages, except that its tech cards are not currently answered. Cards like Shadow King, cards like Juggernaut really suit the meta, whereas uh, a lot of the stuff that the good stuff deck is sort of falling off in the meta. And number one is Move Legion, because Move Legion is the current deck that has a historical win rate. And if we know our history, that means it will get nerfed. All right, loyal listeners and viewers, you can see the deck lists in the show notes. Uh, and that, and so if you would like to start playing with them right away, and that brings us to our final segment of today, which is one more slide over Glazer. You're going to have to go back to the den slide, which is, uh, oh, our, this, okay. uh, this is how we always do it, Aaron variant mm. of the week. All right. We have three beautiful. Well, as any, as much as any Deadpool art could be beautiful. Uh, variants here. We have sort of a post-apocalyptic Deadpool. Which of you two gentlemen picked this Wade Wilson? I got Was the Mido one. I got the Momoko okay, one. Okay, that's you, Aaron. So, you- so, so I liked it because I really like Alex Horley's art. I really, really like the background. I like the way Deadpool is set off against the background. I think it looks really, like, gorgeous. Um, and I like the, like, Ponjo thing, the weapons. It feels like okay, so 90s art isn't generally very good, but this feels like 90s art in the way you wanted it to look. Like, actually huh. good. I really enjoy it. Cool. That brings us to the middle one, which is you, Den. Why did you pick this Deadpool variant? Honestly, I couldn't find, like, one that completely amazed me. And to be honest, I'm using the one on the right because I think it, it looks pretty cool. Um, but I don't know. I just like Deadpool and I don't know, like, I hope it's not insulting to the, to Peach Momoko's work, but like in not such a serious set. Like, I, I think Deadpool is a very like funny character in the way that he, he barely is able to die, but he still takes things extremely lightly. And I kind of like the like the the light colors and that kind of thing. Like I think it reflects the character well. I think I it's really, really love one. this one. Yeah, yeah. I, I I love this one. It's my second favorite. After I picked the Scotty Young uh, bundle one because I think I am a notorious Deadpool hater, but I think it captures what could be good about the character of Deadpool in theory, which is his extreme extreme goofy, but not Edge Lord goofy sort of side of the character. So I uh, appreciated that. I also like the artist in general. So, and this is when I play Deadpool, this is the one that I use. All right. That brings us to saying goodbye to our friends. But before we head out, Den, what would folks find if they were to look at your content on Marvel Snap Zone or check you out on Twitter, X, Elon's personal playground, whatever. Uh, well, on Marvel Snap Zone, you can find a lot of things because we have a, a pretty big team, so a lot of topics are covered. Um, usually, I would step in for metagame related topics, so tier list, patch analysis, and that kind of things. And uh, occasionally, I uh, like to um, help or like replace Safety Blade when he can't do it on uh, new cards and more uh, creative topics uh, but yeah usually I'm the I'm the metagame person of the of the website 
and on my Twitter, you're going to see a deck every day. Uh, and you're going to see a lot of trolling. Please do not take me seriously on Twitter. I've had a lot of people <laughs> ask me if I was being serious or not. Um, the internet no, has really. ma made me a very unserious person. If you want me to be serious and you're not putting in your message, please be serious. There's a very high chance I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> so my turn to sell then and i'm going to do it a different way i think that there are in some order the three most influential people and in all of marvel snap are cozy cam best and then i Big think names. that i think that those are the three most influential people in all of marvel snap the people that have the widest reach and that reach having impact on others you see den decks you see the impact of den's tier lists and his thoughts on these decks every day when you're playing snap whether you know where they came from or not in much the same way you'll see cozy and cam's decks whether you know that that's what you're seeing or not you go play marvel snap and everywhere you go you see and can feel the impact if you know what you're looking for of deck choices of tech choices of specific cards that um den or the others think are good or bad or value undervalued or overvalued and it shapes the way we all experience the game and i will argue for all three but especially den as he's the one who's here that it is for the better because having an extremely high level person trying to shape the matter like this is part of why the game is all not always but almost always in such a healthy place it's a willingness to um my favorite thing about Marvel Snap, not my favorite, but like my one of my favorite things about Marvel Snap Zone is there's a willingness to be creative. And I think a lot of that comes from Den. There's not just a like, so um, we were ahead of the curve on like the move decks and stuff, right? And a lot of the meta was resistant to that kind of change. And we'll still pull back to Darkhawk good stuff and pull back to previous things. And Den is always willing to push the new thing and push the envelope. It infects Marvel Snap Zone, and I think it's for the better. And yeah, you should 100% be reading his work. You will be better at it. Oh, also, uh, my favorite thing on YouTube right now is the coaching videos. Uh, oh. He does group coaching for Marvel Snap Zone Premium members. So if you want group coaching, join Marvel Snap Zone Premium. We'll be giving away some more passes for that next month. But um, in addition to, like, if you don't join that, you can still watch the coaching sessions on the Marvel Snap Zone YouTube, which is likely where a lot of you are watching this. Um, Den refuses to make a thumbnail. But <laughs> beyond their refusal to uh, make a thumbnail... My... I was never asked. Then I, I, I was never asked you. for it. I literally just uploaded the video, let, send a message, and say, hey, it's online. Thumbnail. Continue, <laughs> continue. Do not let it's the algorithm not, and not. YouTube's bullshit get you, man. Be one I, of the last I, honest men uh, on YouTube. Uh, All right. he, he really is. But you should 100% follow him. And, like, he's honestly, like, I think the best coach I've ever seen in the game. That is very okay, high ne never mind. I was serious. Yeah. Like, don't, don't. Forget what I said about myself before. Just keep that part, please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, make sure you also uh, follow Dan at Twitter at Dan underscore CCG. And after you're done doing that, make sure you check out our socials, which again on Twitter slash X are snap at snap judge cast. We are on the Marvel snap zone discord as the official podcasting partner of Marvel snap. The links to join the discord are in the show notes and in the description of the episode in both YouTube and your friendly neighborhood podcaster, our email is snapjudgmentspodcast at gmail.com. We're on Mastodon at snapjudgments with an E at tabletop.vip. And last but not least, we are on YouTube with thumbnails at snapjudgmentspod. So that brings us to the end of another episode of All New Snap Judgments. Dan, thank you so much for joining us once Thanks more for, for this very me. informative episode. I'll, Always a pleasure. I honestly can't wait for the September edition when I look at the cards. I feel like 
we're going to argue a lot because all the cards look so good. Uh-huh. Like the meta game is good. I don't know which week we're going to do it, but if it's the Alioth or the the Morbius week, oof, the debates I think we're going to be so We got to get we got we got away from Morbius. I'm so excited to see what the hell that card does. Oh yeah, like the, there's going to be heated debate the next time I'm on this podcast if it happens anytime in September, let me tell you that. <laughs> Well, Let's very go. exciting. We're very excited to have you back every month to do this top 10 deck slash tier list. And as always, Glazer, it is wonderful to do this show with you. Thank you so much for spending your evening with me, my friend. Absolutely. Peace until September. Then war. <laughs> <laughs> All right, loyal listeners and viewers, that brings us firmly to an end of another episode of All New Snap Judgments. Have a great week. Stay safe. Make good choices and keep on snapping.